name is Sarah Burnt, and we're here today at Hybrid Fitness, but we're actually not here to work out. We're going to go back to the kitchen to Fit Fresh Cuisine to talk to Curtis. So at Fit Fresh Cuisine, we have an all healthy menu. We are um, located within the same building as Hybrid Fitness. And at Fit Fresh Cuisine, Curtis Mitchell is our chef. That's right. We have a grilled vegetable salad uh, with heirloom tomatoes and uh, watermelon sorbet. Both are very simple, very summer, very fresh. Perfect. Do you use uh, fresh ingredients, local ingredients, on a regular basis here? Yes, as much as we can at Fit Fresh, we try to get local, organic, uh, try to help the farmers out as much as we can. Great, great. All right, let's begin. Which one are you going to make first? Uh, we're going to start off with the watermelon sorbet. Uh, it's very easy. It's just a little bit of time consuming. It takes about three hours in the freezer, but that's mostly time spent in the freezer and not time spent working on it. So you don't need to wait around while it's in the freezer. Exactly. Okay. What I've done here is I've uh, peeled the watermelon, cut it up, and seeded it. And I'm just going to take it, throw it right in the food processor. There might be a couple seeds left in there, but that's all right as long as uh, you don't buzz it up too much. All you're looking for here is uh, soup-like consistency. So you don't want to overwork it? Uh, not if you have some seeds in there, you just don't want to bust up the seed. All right, that's good right there. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty watery. Mm-hmm, water. What I have here is a fine chinois. If you have a fine strainer, you can use that. Um, a little bit of cheesecloth over a regular strainer will work also. Okay. Uh, we'll put it in here. So what is the difference between this and a, and a regular strainer? Uh, this is very fine, and it's also obviously cone-shaped. Um, so with a ladle, you can really get in there and get all the juices out of there. You want to press it down good and get all the good juice out of there. We'll transfer it over to a pan here. You can use any kind of pan. Um, I like to use something like this that's, uh, that's got a lot of surface area so it doesn't take as long in the freezer. I mean, you, wow. can, use a, you can use a smaller pan if you want or a bowl, but it's, it's just going to take a lot longer in the freezer. You can use, even use ice cube trays if you want. Oh, okay. So we're going to take a little bit of lemon. I'm going to use uh, an entire lemon here. This is a real small lemon though, so if you have a larger lemon, you know, use about half. Okay. And don't get any seeds or pulp in there. Okay. This is just going to cut the sweetness because these watermelons are real sweet. And you can do this with any kind of juice. Um, you know, if you want to use blueberry, blackberry, raspberry, oh. Um, just, uh, you know, with the uh, tartar juices, you're going to probably have to add a little bit of sugar to them. Okay. And I'm going to take a little bit of vodka. I have uh, some Death Stores vodka here from uh, Wisconsin. Uh -huh. So sticking with the theme. Sure. And we're going to add about a shot. There we go. The purpose of the vodka, other than the flavor? The purpose of the vodka is uh, to impede the crystallization. Uh, it'll give you a little bit of a smoother product at the end. Okay. Um, and uh, it'll just uh, have a little bit of better uh, mouthfeel to it. Great. So I'm going to take this and throw it in the freezer. Uh, in about a half an hour, I'm going to go back to it and um, I'm going to stir it up and you guys can check it out from there. It's going to take about another half an hour and then this will be ready to put into the food processor. Okay, and this has been in the freezer for how long? This has been in the freezer for about two and a half hours. So to, we're almost ready to go to the food processor. Yep. Another half an hour or so. Yep. Perfect. All right. You just want to scrape down the sides in case there's any extra crystals on the sides. All right, we have a grilled vegetable and uh, heirloom tomato salad. I got my Japanese eggplant here. Just cut the ends off. I like to cut it uh, maybe about half an inch. Lay down on there. Do a little bit of salt. And a little bit of pepper. A little bit of the grapeseed oil on it. Grapeseed oil has a nice high smoke points. So it'll be it'll be nice for the high dry heat for the grill. Sure. So you um, grill them 
in these strips. And yep. then you dice them later. Correct. I'll grill them up like this, and then uh, after they're grilled, we'll put a dice on them so they're nice in the salad. Uh, corn, all you do is shuck it, give it a good wash afterwards. And then same with this, just a little bit of salt and pepper on the corn. And then a little bit of grapeseed oil. That is ready for the grill. So I got my grill nice and hot and uh, just looking for these to get a little bit tender and get a good, uh, that good grill flavor in there to help me round out my salad. Mm -hmm. sure. Yep, you want a you want a high dry heat for this. Okay. The grill's great for that. Great. So that's what you're looking for there. It's starting to get a little bit of soft, starting to sweat a little bit. I got my eggplant grilled up here. Uh, it's still in slices. I have my corn ready to go. It just needs to come off the cob. So we'll start with the eggplant. Uh, I like to do you know a nice medium dice on it. Make sure you use a sharp knife so it doesn't just squish the eggplant because it's, uh, it's a very fragile vegetable. To use my fingers to bust these up. Otherwise, they'll be so stuck together in your salad, and you'll just get a bite of corn. I have some roasted corn here uh, from Lux Produce. Very nice sweet corn. Sweet corn is great this time of year. Uh, I grilled it up to give it a little bit more sweetness. It enhances the sweetness through caramelization. Uh, when you grill vegetables, it really brings out the sugar real nice. Um, I have some heirloom tomatoes here. I bought a cup of heirloom tomatoes. I got this from Harmony Valley uh, Farms. Uh, I chose the Japanese eggplant compared to the larger eggplant because these are a lot more firm. They hold up on the grill real great. When you use the bigger eggplants, they tend to break down and you'll end up with mush for salad. So, so we go with the Japanese eggplants for this. I have a little bit of diced red pepper. Uh, it's brunoise here. Um, so I'm going to throw this in. This is just really for color. Some chiffonade basil here. We'll throw that in there too. We'll just mix that up good. It's a very simple vinaigrette again. There's no dicing or slicing or anything for the vinaigrette. We'll just do one small lemon. I have about a tablespoon of honey here that we're going to put in there. This is just some simple clover honey. And I have about a quarter cup here of grapeseed oil. Great, I like well, some of those vendors at the market sell uh, sunflower oil. Would that work? Or? It would. Sunflower oil would be great in here. And you're pouring it pretty slow. Yep, I like to get it uh, emulsified in there. So once you got it mixed up pretty good, just stomp it in here. Put it all right in there. We'll do a little bit of salt, just to taste. And a little pinch of pepper too, a little bit of black pepper. That is beautiful. Oh, it's a nice little salad. That is really nice. It's not overly, it doesn't look like you've got a whole lot of uh, vinaigrette in there. No, I like to keep it nice and light and let the ingredients speak for themselves. Sure. Wonderful. Been in the uh, freezer for about three hours now. I've been stirring it periodically. Uh, about every half an hour I've been stirring it. Uh, and as you can see, we got some nice uh, crystallization going on there. So we're just going to take this and we're going to throw it into our food processor. Get it all in there. 
Yeah, you can definitely eat it like this. You don't need to put it at the food processor at the okay. end. Um, it, it's uh, totally up to you if you want a mo little bit more uh, rustic uh, or texture. Just gonna smooth it out. Yep. Okay. Yeah, it's totally just a texture thing right here. And it's a good idea to put your food processor in the freezer for a few minutes before you do this, just so it just so it doesn't melt your sorbet right away. Sure. I got a chilled wine glass here. Just a little sprig of apple mint to go on the top. Very nice summer snack for these hot summer days and no sugar added. No sugar added, so nope. it's not terribly high in calories even. Nope, not at all. I mean, the most calories you're gonna get from it is probably from the vodka, and there's about a shot in, in the entire batch.